Hello everyone, thanks for coming. Today we'll do things a little bit different. As you can see from the screen, I'm showing you a little bit of statistic about our channel. So we reached a very small milestone. Now we have uh, over 100 subscribers. I just checked, we have 110 subscribers this morning. Thank you for your support. I know comparing to most of the channel, this is uh, kind of a tiny little channel, but I would say our subscribers and viewers probably have the most advanced uh, skill set in AI for healthcare because we're not introductory level of channel. We don't talk about um, introductory level of materials. We talk about papers, uh, research paper in AI for healthcare. Okay, let's switch back to the paper we want to talk about. So today I picked a paper that's um, a few years old. Um, this is a paper that we did um, in 2015. That's the first uh, deep learning work my group did uh, in analyzing electronic health records. So it's called Dr. AI, predicting clinical events via recurrent neural networks. And it's joint work by Edward Choi, Taha Bahadori, uh, Andy Shoes, uh, Buzz Stewart, and myself about the model we're using, recurrent neural network. So why RNN? Right? RNN is a very natural model for variable length sequences such as longitudinal electronic health records and or time series like EEG data or ECG data or even text sequences like clinical notes. If we look at the model of RNN, um, it's a uh, similar to deep neural network with one additional uh, connection. So in deep neural network, V4 network, you have input vector X, goes through linear uh, uh, embedding, followed by nonlinear activation, then you have this latent state, then you go through many, many layers of that. Then finally you have a prediction, right? For example, predicting uh, mortality. And in RNN, all we did is adding another edge that is from the hidden state to itself, right? This is the recurrent connection. That's why this model called recurrent neural network. If we look at the model more closely in the mathematical formulation, you see that we have, um, we need to specify a few equations here. One is this mapping from input layer to the hidden state, right? The hidden state is um, this applying function F over two different input, right? Input X, T, right? This input vector at timestamp T and another input is the hidden state from the previous time step, t minus one. And we will do a linear transformation of both vectors, multiply by a matrix U and W respectively, and add a bias vector B1, and followed by activation function F, for example, a ReLU unit or a sigmoid unit or a 10H. And then after that, we have the output layer, which is another linear transformation over the hidden state. So you can see this equation V times HT plus uh, bias, another bias vector B2. Finally, from the output layer, uh, we will do, uh, go through another activation function to make the final prediction Y hat T, right? This uh, function G could be a sigmoid function if it's binary classification or a softmax if you do multi-class uh, classification. There are many different structure of RNN. There's based on different applications. You could have uh, this one-to-many mapping. So you will learn a fix, uh, use of fixed size input and compute a um, fixed size output. And sorry, this is a one-to-many. Uh, so you have fixed input, but variable output. Right? Imagine application of uh, inputting image, output a sequence of words describing the image. Then you can have uh, many-to-one applications, that is sequential classification. For example, you have multiple visits of a patient, then finally you want to predict the health status of the patient. Then we have many to many. This is the sequential prediction. That's uh, the paper I'll talk about today. So every, uh, so you can have a multiple visit and every visit you will make a prediction what's going to happen in the next visit. And finally, you have a, I mean, you can have another many-to-many -many mappings, right? In the or this, the, the third example, the the mapping are one-to-one. Now -one, right? you have one visit mapped to one prediction, but uh, in some other times, you, the the input and output sequences can have a different length. 
For example, the input could be a Chinese uh, sentence and output could be an English sentence. Right? This is, can be achieved by two different RNNs and put together called sequence to sequence model. So let's look at the, the structure of RNN. Right? You have a, a, a simple computation of taking input xt at timestamp t and the previous hidden state ht minus one, then pass through uh, this activation function together, for example, 10h, then you, you get the hidden state of the next uh, timestamp, right, ht. And you can put them together. And this particular uh, orange box is called uh, RNN cell. Right? So this is a naive implementation of RNN, have all kinds of uh, limitation, for example, uh, vanishing gradient problem. So uh, people have proposed uh, alternative modules for RNN. So that's uh, more sophisticated, has better property in terms of training right, to overcome uh, managing gradient. And in this paper, uh, Dr. AI, they used this particular uh, RNN variant called GRU, or Gated Recurrent Unit. So we'll give a quick introduction of uh, GRU. It's uh, published uh, by Cho and et al. in 2014. And combines, uh, I mean, um, they, they introduce a different set of uh, gating mechanism, right? And uh, so let's just dive right into it, right? So one important uh, module of this GRU is to have this up-to-date gate, right? So you can, if you look at this um, mathematically, it's just still uh, taking an input of uh, current time, xt, and the previous hidden state, ht minus one, and pass that through a sigmoid function, right? This uh, uh, um, sigma here indicate the sigmoid function, right? So it will map this uh, input into a value between zero and one. So that's the gate, right? So if uh, the output of uh, sigmoid is close to zero, so the gate is closed, right? So if that's the how you control how information flow, right? If its output is zero, means gate closed, right? If the output close to one, that means the gate is open, and they will use this gate. Uh, to control how much information allowed to be flow through this um, this uh, particular node, right? We'll see how this gate will be used, right? They have multiple gates, right? This is just one of the gate, uh, ZT for update gate, and then they have another gate called reset gate, right? It's used to determine how much past information to forget. It has identical structure as the uh, up, I mean the the update gate. It's still taking the input of uh, current timestamp XT and the previous hidden state HT minus one and apply a linear transformation with two different uh, different parameter matrix, right? UR and WR uh, plus a bias vector BR and then apply the sigma function again that give you uh, RT, that's the uh, reset gate. So then let's see how the, the gates are used. Then uh, this particular step is to determine how much new information to be added into the uh, new hidden state, right? You can see uh, we still have the uh, another linear transformation over input x plus um, the reset gate uh, element-wise multiplication over wh times ht minus one right so this particular part controls how much information you allow to flow or to be reset right if this is close to zero means i mean we will take 100 percent the new information uh, from xt but if this uh, RT equal to one, that means everything uh, here, the, all the previous uh, hidden state will allow to be part of the input going forward. So it's basically, this is how you use gate, right? This element wise multiplication with the, the, the transformation of the hidden state allow you to kind of control the information flow. And then we have the final update to the new hidden state that is just a uh, uh, one minus uh, the uh, update gate, uh, element-wise multiplication with the previous hidden state h t minus one, and the same gate z t, element-wise multiplication with the new information h t with t. And now let's put all of them together. You can see uh, GRU uh, can be described with the following four equations. And uh, the first two are these two different gates, update gate z t and the reset gate r t. They both take the input of current uh, hid, uh, current input xt and the previous hidden state ht minus one, and then transform that over a set of sigmoid function to get the the, uh, the gates, and then we have this new information ht being calculated uh, using the reset gate 
and, and also the input, same input, right? XT and HT minus one. And then finally, this uh, the hidden state HT is a kind of a linear combination of H uh, T minus one and applied with this one minus update gate. And then this update gate ZT and multiply with a new information H tilde. So one important thing I, I just want to mention, this uh, gating information here, it's not a scalar, right? So this is actually a vector. If you look at this particular, any of this gating mechanism over here, it's a uh, vector element-wise multiplication, right? This is the, this particular symbol indicate, right? If this is 100-dimensional hidden uh, vectors, then this gate vector is also 100 dimensions. What it means is uh, this, we have 100 different gates that controls which dimension of information can flow, which dimension you want to um, actually shut, right? So you have a lot of flexibility, right? It's not just simple binary, uh, yes or no. It's actually a, a multi-dimensional gating mechanism to allow some information to pass, some information uh, to stop there. Okay, so that's the GRU. Uh, a variant of uh, RNN, and most of uh, these days, people use their use a GRU uh, unit, or uh, another common, uh, variants of RNN is called uh, a long short-term memory, LSTM. So in this paper, uh, Dr. AI paper, we use GRU. So that's why I introduced that here. So let's come back to the task of Dr. AI. And the task is disease progression modeling, or uh, simply put, you want to predict the next visit um, based on the past history, right? For example, you have a visit one, visit two, something happened, then what's going to happen in visit three, right? So this, this is the prediction task. We want to predict, in particular, the diagnoses. And in that paper, they're also trying to predict the duration between the visit. And uh, the input. So the inputs are for each visit is this multi-hot vector. It's basically all the events happen in that visit. And each of the event mapped to a dimension in the very high dimensional vectors. If the event happened, then the corresponding dimension will be one. Otherwise, it will be zero. So it'll be a very sparse vector, very high dimensional. For example, fever happened in this visit, then the corresponding, corresponding dimension of fever will be one. And otherwise, it will have a zero. So that's the input and that's the task. And the model of Dr. AI is the, it's a, this two-layer RNN model and implemented with GRU. And let's look at this a little bit carefully. So they have this multi-hot vectors as input, right? And then uh, they, they go through a kind of a linear um, embedding here. Then uh, they have this embedding vector H. Then they concatenate H with uh, some kind of duration elements, right? So it's duration between two consecutive visits. as just a, a scalar value, right? In addition to the, the embedding, then use that, uh, concatenate those together as input to the RNN, right? So they have two layer of RNN, right? This is another important thing. RNN actually you can apply multiple layer of RNN and just stack them together, right? That's uh, that's also very commonly done. And in this paper, they did a, a stack two RNN, uh, one on top of another. Then finally, they, they want to predict two things. Y hat, right? This is just um, um, the discrete events, right? The, what diagnoses the next visit will have, and then the direction to the next uh, next visit. So what data they use, right? So they use a, a 260,000 patients of outpatient uh, EHR data from Sutter Health. And then the patient records have over 10 years data and the input codes include diagnoses, medications, procedures, and uh, total dimensionality is over 38,000. Then output labels include uh, a set of diagnoses, uh, 1,183 diagnoses code. And um, so the result, right? So the result in terms of uh, predicting the next visit and sequential prediction, uh, so the, the metric here they're using is the top K recall, right? So the, the number of true positive that you correctly predicted over the total number of true positive, right? If one visit have 10 codes, and if the model able to predict seven, so the top K recall will be 70%, right? So that's the, the, the metric here, right? You can see that for RNN, um, I mean, we're able to get over 70% of uh, true top uh, K recall at, 30, right? If you allow making 30 predictions, right? Among those, uh, you can reach a, a close to 70% of coverage over all the, the true positives. And if you use some baseline methods such as logistic regression 
and uh, this is much worse, I mean, only above 50%, then a uh, I mean, very simple heuristic, you just use historical record and look at what's the fre most frequent uh, diagnosis code that the patient had, use that uh, as your prediction. It's actually not too bad, right? 65 or over 65%. And another heuristic we use is just use the last visit, right? Whatever happened may happen again. So that's what we use. That's actually didn't work very well. So it's only uh, 20 to 30% uh, of accuracy there. So that's the, uh, the performance in terms of uh, prediction accuracy. And we also did uh, some interesting transfer learning type of uh, task. That is, we take a um, model train on one hospital, then use that model as initialization then to fine tune uh, an, another model with, with data set coming from a different hospital. In this case, we use uh, Sutter Health uh, data to train the initial model, then fine tune another uh, models on a separate data set, a mimic data set. Very different data set, right? one is outpatient uh, visit, another one is actually inpatient visit. So, I mean, in theory, it should be very different. But still, you can see there's the benefit of uh, leveraging the, the pre-trained model, right? So the, the y-axis is performance, we call it 30, the higher the better. And then there's two curves here, right? The, the blue curve is the one you, you use the, the starter model to, um, the, to initialize the, the model for, um, for mimic. You can see the performance is much better after a few epoch of uh, training. Well, if you start randomly and start trying to train just with mimic data, so that's the cold star setting, and it's actually performed much worse. And, and later on, this uh, type of uh, pre-training strategy become quite popular, and, and this is just one early evidence that uh, pre-training uh, works. Okay, so uh, in summary, uh, we talked about uh, Dr. AI, and the, oh, by the way, this paper is published in uh, machine learning for healthcare in 2016. And it's about the sequential uh, disease prediction using longitudinal EHR data. And the model they're using is recurrent neural network. Okay, thank you very much.